Four books that have changed my life. Welcome to a quick Q&A. It's a new series I'm doing on my YouTube channel where I will answer a non-related football question. I don't know how often I'll do this, but I'm hopefully gonna do it once a week and the video will be about five minutes in length and I'm gonna get right into it because I don't wanna exceed five minutes. And you know me, I can talk off the cuff, unscripted for about an hour if no one stops me because I'm just a psychopath like that. So this week's question is from Batim Sharifi, he says, what's your favorite book and why is that? Well, Batim, not only am I gonna tell you about one of my favorite books, I'm gonna tell you about four of my favorite books. Um, truth be told, I'm an avid reader. I have a Word document on my computer, which is currently 61 pages long. It's a list of books that I have to read before I die. Will I get there? I, I would like to think yes. Having said that, I have no idea what life will bring me. So. I'll just try my best and the bar is high and if I can shoot for a stars, maybe I'll land on the moon and I'll read like a third of those if I'm lucky. And I'm a little bit behind because I do most of my reading during traveling and during the pandemic I have not traveled at all. So I am behind. I'm trying my best to squeeze in as much reading as I can here from home, but um, I will catch up at some point. So I have brought to the table four books that I'm about to show you. And I'm gonna just talk maybe like a few seconds about each one and why they've impacted me. Um, and maybe they'll impact you a little bit. I'm not gonna tell you the exact like synopsis of the book and the conclusion. I would like you to read it for yourself and I'll encourage you to read it, but I'll just tell you quick takeaways from each book. So let's get started. The first one is Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. So I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan. I love his stuff. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything he does, but I will always say like for those of you who you know disagree with certain people about certain things, there's no one that you'll always agree with all the time. So try to learn from everyone. Um, cast aside the things you don't agree with, but try to learn as best you can from, from successful people. What I love about Tim, and this is the third book I've read from Tim Ferriss so far. I've read Four Hour Work Week and Four Hour Body. Two books that I've enjoyed that have also impacted my life. This one was very good also because um, if you're uh, a Tim Ferriss podcast listener, which I am, again, I haven't been able to as much because I'm not commuting as much, and that's typically when I listen to my podcast, but generally speaking, I'm a huge fan of his podcast, and I like that he interviews successful people from all different walks of life and learns from them. So this book is actually a collection of all the learning from all those podcasts. So he will interview people from uh, bodybuilding like Arnold Schwarzenegger or successful business people. Um like Seth Godin, for example, and so forth. So um, I'll just tell you like quick 20 seconds learning from this book. One of the common themes from successful people is that they all invest in their sleep. And I try to get as much sleep as I can in addition to other things. Like I'm huge on like holistic, um, you know, nutrition, getting your nutrients in, measuring your micronutrients, macronutrients, tracking your sleep. Part of the reason I do that um, very meticulously is because my line of work, it is very tiring. I'm up around the clock. I'm, you know, when I'm going to, to stadiums and games, I, I sometimes finish work around 2 a.m. just because by the time you get out of the press conferences and you record your podcast, you edit it, your bloodshot eyes, you're very tired. So I try to dig deep and get as much energy as I can from natural sources. So I'm really interested in sleep and stuff like that. So um, a couple of things about sleep from this book. Um, men and women, they sleep at different body temperatures. So if you have a spouse, you might notice that if you're a male, that your side of the bed will be a little bit cooler and the, and your wife's side of the bed will be, or your spouse or whoever, their side of the bed will be a little bit warmer. That's because women emit more heat when they sleep, therefore making the entire bed very hot and difficult to sleep in. So. Uh, a lot of successful people, they will invest in devices to put on their side of the bed to regulate their temperature on their side of the bed. Um, I don't do that. Maybe if I get rich one day, I will invest in something like that. But I will um, have a lot of hacks that I've learned from this book and Tim Ferriss, such as like investing in blue light glasses to make sure that the blue light is not emitting your eyes. Because actually, if you like, from, based on science, the last two hours before going to bed, if you're at that point looking at blue light, it can actually tell your brain not to sleep for a long time after that. So that's just one of the cool things. Which leads me to the next book that has impacted my life, The Sleep Revolution. As you can tell, sleep has been a theme so far. This is by Ariana Huffington. The cool thing about her is that, you know, and she's dedicated to life about researching about um, sleep. She super believes in naps. So again, this is a successful businesswoman 
in her office, she actually encourages his naps to the point where um, she opens the curtain to her office. It's all glass, right? So she opens the curtain and she takes a nap in front of her employees to make sure that they know it's okay to take naps because she believes that that will increase productivity. Super interesting. And by the way, one quick thing from this book that is very interesting, the ideal temperature for sleeping is 16 degrees Celsius. So if you can do that before you go to bed, uh, among other things like blacking out your windows, uh, putting out garbage bags if you have to, sleep masks, earplugs, all that stuff helps. And next book is not about sleep, so a little bit of deviation here. This is Principles by Ray Dalio. Uh, Ray Dalio is amazing. Um, this book is basically just, let me see how many pages it is, it's quite thick. I finished reading this maybe like a couple years ago. It's almost 600 pages, and I think it is about 600 pages. Um, he basically has principles for every decision he has to make in his life to eliminate decision fatigue. Because how much of our day is spent just thinking about what we're supposed to do? If you have systems in place that to, to eliminate that, um, it makes your life much easier. And you know, after I read this book and I've gotten way better at this, and really in the past year or two, I can't remember a single day where I've woken up and wasted time and, and not been productive or procrastinated. I honestly can't remember the last time I procrastinated ever in my life. I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing when I wake up and I have a set of systems and um, even like algorithms that like based on if something happens in my day, I know what decision I have to make. This book was very helpful in that. And last but not least, um, um, by the way, I'm gonna give you two bonus books after this, which I don't have hard copy. They are either audiobooks or digitally that I have, so I don't have the hard copy to show you. But this is Jab, Jab, Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. I love Gary V. Uh, I'm sure you know him. I don't think he needs an introduction. A social media guru, master. This book is actually a little bit outdated. Um, I think it's 2013. Let me see. 2013. So this was written, you know, 2013. Think about what Instagram, Facebook, social media looked like back then. It's changed a lot now. But he basically tells you how to quote unquote stand out from the noise and stand out in the noisy social media world. And now 2021, there's more competition than ever. There's more influencers than ever. But what I learned from him is marketing. And there's a lot of lessons in this book that I, I take into um, consideration. Jab, jab, right hook, by the way. Basically, it means that um, he believes too many brands um, just sell people like unapologetically selling things down their throat. That is called the right hook. You don't want to be right hooking people constantly. You want to jab, 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 and then right hook. The jabs are basically relate, relatable content. Don't sell people things all the time, and then build trust, uh, and once you have that, then you hit them with the right hook. They'll like, they're more likely to buy from you. Um, I could go and, like, and talk an hour just about marketing because I love marketing. Uh, it's helped me grow my podcast quite a bit, and uh, uh, I have some big goals for it, and I've learned a lot of it through people like Gary Vee. Um, two bonus books that I don't have the hard copy for. One is The E-Myth Revisited. I don't remember the name. This is uh, embarrassingly unprepared for a YouTube video. I should probably have known that. I can't remember what it was called, uh, who the author was, but it's a great book. E-Myth Revisited. Um, it helps you streamline your business. So that may or may not apply to you. It applied to me in my life because when I was trying to do journalism, I also owned a coffee shop. Uh, I have since sold that coffee shop a couple years ago. But at the time, I needed to streamline my business so that I could write full time. So that e myth revisited really helped me. Um, let me think. Another great one. I'm just going to bring up the uh, exact name so I don't butcher it. Um, how to how to win friends and influence you by Dale Carnegie. I read this a, a few years ago. It basically talks a lot about like not getting so caught up in the idea of like arguing with people. It really helped me deal with haters because I, the, the, basically with each passing year, I have more fans and more haters. And the ratio like fans to haters is like super towards like mostly hardcore fans and a cult following. But then I also have a percentage of haters that slowly grow. And I've actually been able to convert a lot of those haters to big fans of mine um, just because of this book alone. So again, Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie is a freaking genius. And um, I highly recommend that. And it puts things into perspective, not only um, refraining from engaging with people when even when you know you're right and somebody else is wrong, um, really learning also how to command the room, 
going into a room that where people are opposed to you and they're trying to take you down, but being able to navigate that and also not embarrass anyone if you prove them wrong. You know, no one, it's a, it's a lose lose situation in that. So the art of negotiation and kind of just talking and not letting little things bother you, that one was a huge hit. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I guess give me a like. I don't know, I'm not really, I don't really know what to do with this YouTube stuff. I'm so new to stuff like this, right? Uh, it's mostly just uploading podcast clips, but I guess give me a like and a subscribe. I, seem, I think that so what YouTube people, the YouTube people say these days. So uh, do that if you like it. But also more importantly, if you like this series and you want to submit a question, you can do, do so at Keon at KeonSabani.com. That's my email. You can comment on this video directly. And again, the rule is non-football related because I talk about football a little bit too much in my life. I want to branch out and talk about other things too. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was helpful. And whether it was helpful or not, what I would say to sign off, read. Reading is good for you.